There's a lot going on in these rate law problems, so let's try another one. Let's generate ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. Given this data table, we should be able to write the complete rate law with the exponents, the rate constant, and the proper units, and then find the rate for experiment number four. As we did before, we'll start with the generic rate law. We'll say that rate equals K, the rate constant, times the concentration of the first reactant, which is hydrogen again, raised to some power, I don't know what the exponent is, and I'm going to multiply by the concentration of the second reactant raised to another exponent that I don't know. So once we do that, then we have to take a look at our data to see if we can figure out what the exponents are. So if I want to find x, if I want to find the exponent for hydrogen, I need to limit my variables. So if I'm testing how hydrogen affects the rate, I need to keep the nitrogen constant. If I look for two reactions where the nitrogen is constant, I see reaction one and reaction three have the same concentration for nitrogen. So what's happening to the hydrogen here? My concentration of hydrogen is increasing by a factor of three. What's happening to my rate? Well, my rate is going from 1.1 times 10 to the negative three to 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative three. So my rate is going up by a factor of nine. So the question is three to what power equals nine? And by doing that, we now know that hydrogen is a second order reactant. Now we can do the same thing for nitrogen. If we're testing the nitrogen, we want to find two reactions where the hydrogen is constant. Well, that would be the first two. The hydrogen is held constant in the first two. If I clean this up a little bit, I can see what's happening to my nitrogen. Well, my nitrogen is going up by a factor of three, 0.022 to 0.066. And my rate is also increasing by a factor of three, 1.1 to 3.3. So for my concentration of nitrogen, I'm increasing that by a factor of three, and my rate is also going up by a factor of three. So three to what power equals three? Well, one. So we now know that nitrogen is a first order reactant. So I can rewrite my rate law with this new information. I can say that the rate equals my rate constant times concentration of hydrogen to the second power times the concentration of nitrogen to the first power, or I can just leave that be. Now it's time to find the rate constant, K. It doesn't matter which reaction you use because K is a constant under these conditions. So I generally just take first data set right here. I'm gonna use the data from reaction one and plug that information into my rate equation. I'm gonna say the rate, which I know to be 1.1 one times 10 to the negative three molarity per second equals K, that's what I'm looking for, times 0.013 molar squared times 0.022 molar. So when I solve for K, I get a value of 296, and I wanna be conscious of the units. I have molarity per second on the left side, so I'm gonna want molarity per second on the right side. On the right side already, I have molarity squared and molarity. So I have molarity cubed on the right side already. So first thing I want to do is I want to introduce my seconds. I'm going to put seconds on the bottom of my fraction so that it matches on both sides. And I have three molarities on the right side, and I only want one. So I'm going to cancel those out by putting molarity squared on the bottom of my units. And so my total K value is 296 one over seconds times molarity squared, which means I can write a complete rate law that states the rate of this reaction equals 296, one over seconds times molarity squared times the concentration of hydrogen squared times the concentration of nitrogen. Now that I have the complete rate law, I can go back up to my data and I see that reaction four doesn't have a rate. So I can plug in my values for reaction four my concentration of hydrogen is 0.045. My concentration of nitrogen is 0.034. So I can say my rate equals 296, one over seconds times molarity squared, times my concentration of hydrogen, which is 0.045 molar squared, times my concentration of nitrogen, which was 0.034 molar. When I do that, I get a rate equals to 0.02 04, and when I check my units, I've got molarity squared and molarity squared cancel out, so I'm going to have molarity per second, which are the units that I want.